Hey guys, hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I am glad you're here. Today I wanted to do a review, kind of a long-term review of a knife I picked up about a year ago. This is a knife that I bought off of Migaron's website. I actually bought it off of White Mountain Knives, but you can find it on Migaron's website but they have it under a different brand. It's under the AM8 brand. So you go to Migaron's website, Google Migaron Knives, and then when you pull up the Gladiator, which is this model, it'll be under an AM8 branding. So when you look at this knife, it's just a really nice full tie M390 blade. It's PVD coated, so it's really got that nice gray texture. I've cut this through a lot of softer materials like cardboard, um, mainly cardboard, uh, and it has not scratched up that finish, so it seems like a pretty durable PVD finish on there. But anyway, what I was gonna say about this knife is you can see right there on the blade, the only branding is that little AM8 logo. I've got another knife that I'll be reviewing, the Flix, which is an AM8 or a Migaron. I've you know, the information's on Migaron's website. But then the only other marking is the blade steel on the back. It is, again, a full tie, full size knife. So it's by no means a small knife. It does allow you a little space to choke up here if you want to do detail cuts or get closer to the blade. Has fantastic action. It is flipper tab. Has anodized thumb studs and an anodized pivot. It is a, uh, let's see here, has a really good clip, goes in and out of pocket really well. Yeah, I'm wearing khakis today, guys, and it goes in and out of pocket with absolutely no issues whatsoever. So do I carry it a lot? Not really. It is, like I said, it's a bigger knife. We'll do some size comparisons here in a little while. We'll do some measurements. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't carry it on weekends, that I don't love it, that when I go out camping or go up to LJ, do I keep it in my bug out bag? Do I like to work hard with it when I get the opportunities? Yes, because it is just that good of a knife. I'd seen someone's review on it, I forget who it was, and again, it, when I saw it, it didn't really match everything about my jam, because nothing really does. I'm a knife addict, so certain things will get my attention. And what got my attention on this knife was the build quality, or the perceived build quality, according to this reviewer who I really trust. This clip point blade with this nice swedging up here. I like the very understated jimping. I'm not just a big jimping guy you know it's not something that i really feel like i have to have a lot of jimping but i can reverse flick this knife from the thumb studs it's got a lot of room and it's really set up for the thumb flick and then the flipper tab works great too so three methods of deployment a really nice blade really nice blade geometry comes down to a really sharp edge again we'll get some measurements here after we do a few size comparisons has a really nice finger choil that I can use alongside. Now, if you've got bigger hands, it might become problematic, but I use it right there alongside where that flipper is. But you'll see that it does have a shallow but nice sharpening choil. There's your plunge right there. Shows you that you've got you know several good sharpenings there. Um, let's see if I can find a piece of paper and I have to resort to my poo poo digest because my coupons are all sliced up but yeah guys for a larger a larger build a larger knife it cuts very very well whoops that was a cutter error again cutter error So again, it cuts very well. It's got a flat grind. I believe that's a flat grind. I think it's a three quarter flat. Let's double check that. Mm, 
let's just look at some. I think we're looking at three quarter flat, guys. But I could be wrong because sometimes they do really slight hollows. It looks like a flat to me. So yeah, three quarter flat grind. I like the blue thumb studs. I like the blue pivot. I'm not crazy about the little uh, bronze set off, but it doesn't bother me. Um, you've got really simple construction here. You've got your, I think this is a T8. Let's see. T8 and T6s on your body. So T8 on the pivot, T6s on the body. And let's see what. see what we're working with blade stocks about 0.12 I'm really not good at getting that behind the edge that would give me a 0.19 I don't know if that's accurate or not guys but the thickness on this knife, whoops. It's gonna come in right at about a half an inch. And then our handle is going to be an inch here. The blade is going to be from the tip to the body three and three quarters. The cutting edge is going to be three and a half. If you take the space from the choil, you're going to be right at five inches from here to here. And so let's do a couple of quick size comparisons because I don't think my ruler is long enough to measure the whole knife and I sure as hell do not want to do math. So that is the AM8 Goliath next to the Cold Steel 4 Max. You can tell that it is absolutely a full size knife. And there is the Migron AM8 Goliath up next to the Civivi Baby Banter. You can see that it's a good bit bigger than the Baby Banter. And let's look at it next to a bitch made bug out. You can see that it's a big, bigger knife than the bench made bug out. Let's look at it next to our Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And the blade's going to be longer on the Gladiator. It is just about the same length with a little bit shorter handle and a longer blade than the PM2. So that should give you guys a good idea on the overall size or length there. And then the thickness is going to come in right around the same and you'll notice that on this clip point it does terminate down to kind of a sharp pokey point but it does have that nice belly i think this knife would serve as a good skinner as a good cutter as a good everyday user um, it does carry in the pocket very well and then y'all are probably thinking well john you just said you don't carry a lot guys i've got a ton of knives i have plenty of knives to carry different things for different days um, I'm blessed or cursed in that regard. I don't know how you want to look at it, but you know, this is just a knife that is in case number one. It now lives in the, what I consider is the Civivi case with some other Miguron knives, another Miguron knife. And, um, it's just a great knife. I just don't see it a lot. I don't handle it a lot. I don't play with it as much as I should. But it will definitely make it back into the rotation because, like I say, it's a pretty much a forever knife. It's not one I've ever really thought of selling. It's one that I enjoy. It's one that kind of makes me stoked when I've got it in my hand because it's not Medford overbuilt, but it's definitely a big, chonky knife. It's a knife that you can tell when you've got it in your hand that depending on what you're going to be thrown at that day, if you have to do some feather sticking, if you have to do some harder type tasks that you're going to be up to it with this knife it's a nice frame lock it's got probably about 60 percent lock up right there so it is locked up pretty hard so 
say closer to 75% lockup. But just a night that I really enjoy, guys. I mean, it's just uh, if you want to flip it, if you want to use your thumb studs, if you want to sit on the couch and just play around with it, it's just one that really alerts itself or allows itself for that type of action because again the lock bar does not stick up on you the actions whether you use the thumb studs whether you use the reverse flick first flick is a little stiffer because it does have a poppy detent but the flipper tab you can both light switch and you can i think it light switch is better than it push buttons i mean you can push button but it's more of a light switcher that's the natural way that the jimping is going to allow itself you've got no jimping on the uh on the push button side but you do have your jimping that doesn't go all the way around but it comes down right there it would be nice if that jimping did kind of go around and that wasn't as sharp but i can tell you the way that this is angled right here when you put your finger on it it just flies out and it is very comfortable your landing area has this little chamfered area there where your finger is going to land it's not sharp so you don't have any of that residual finger burn from having it land um, when you're flipping it out if you use the flipper and I do like flippers I mean flippers are I don't like a knife that only deploys with the flipper but I do like a flipper tab knife because they're very easy to actuate very easy to get to and the Miguron or AM8 Gladiator is a big bold kind of cool knife so I want to say this knife was around 150 160 bucks for white mountain knives I don't know if that was before or after I put in lefty 10 my code but guys, it does come back in stock. You can go to Miguron's website and check it out. If I were to lose this knife, would I buy it again? Only because my knife buying habits have changed so much and I'm looking at different knives now. I can't say that I would necessarily buy this knife again. Um, but I do love this knife and I don't plan on getting rid of this knife. I don't plan on you know, selling this knife. It's just not that kind of knife. It's a knife that I would like to not lose, like to be able to keep in my collection because I think as time goes on, I will continue to appreciate it. I love the way it's built. I love the fit and finish. I love the way it comes apart. I have had this knife apart. It comes apart very easily. It is on bearings. It's got a very hydraulic action as opposed to just, I mean, it it's not an uncontrollable fall shutter, but it will drop shut with very little effort. So guys, that is the Miguron slash AM8 Gladiator. And I'm so stoked that you guys stopped by to check out the video. If you're still here, any of you are, and you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button below. I didn't say at the beginning of the video, but it does help me have more people get exposed to the videos. It also notifies you guys if you're interested in the content and when new content comes up and what that content is. It'll also let you know when I have live streams that go live or if I release members only content and you guys happen to want to watch some of that. It's just a, a good way to stay connected and I do like to stay connected with the community and the channel kind of affords me the opportunity to do that. So I would appreciate you guys subscribing, but if not, I just appreciate you guys being here. And the thing that I always ask during every video and something that I hope that you will start to do is just look out for the guy or gal to your left, look out for the guy or gal to your right, go forward with love in your heart, when you don't understand or don't agree or oppose what somebody else is saying, try to use debate instead of just hating. You know, see if you can understand their point of view, guys. Life's too short. We're spinning on this rock around the sun. Let's not quabble over the stupid stuff. And most of it really boils down to stupid stuff. Whether it's the difference in a heat treat, the difference in an action, or the difference in somebody's political or religious leanings. It doesn't matter, guys. We're all night people. We're all brothers and sisters. I love you all. Till we meet again, peace.